Sorry about that. Hi. Yes. Ooh, ooh. What's up, Lily? How's it going? Ah, uh, it's going beautifully. Good. It's been an amazing day so far. How are you? Oh, good. It's been a good day. Yeah. The sun's shining. It's it's, it's a good it's a good day. You're in LA, right? I'm in LA. Where are you? Playa Vista. So okay, same. Okay. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. It's a beautiful day. Thanks for oh. coming on here with me. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a, a little human or a little dog below it's you? A dog. Yeah. Got it. Okay. <laughs> very a very cute one at that. Who's very very distracting. Oh, the bubs. What is this dog's name? He's Milo. Milo. That's a great like person name too. He he came with the name. I didn't want to change his name. He's from Mexico. Yeah. And that's his name. Yeah. He's oh, my little buddy. buddy. Yeah. Um and you sent me pictures of your beautiful children. Absolutely. Yeah. Um what a beautiful family you have. Um but so maybe for those who don't know, will you care to introduce yourself and what you do? For sure. Um, I'm just making sure the comments are turned off or they are on? They're off. Okay, got it. Well, even though I can't read your comments, I'm sending each and every one of you love. My name is Preston Smiles and I am a messenger of love sent here to remind us all of the one truth, which is love is all there is, was, and ever will be. Uh, that manifests itself in many ways. Um, most importantly, I would say, father, husband, and transformational facilitator, uh, which means I'm essentially a personal freedom coach and I help people all over the world, thousands and thousands of people all over the world, break through some of their biggest blocks, some of the things that have been holding them back since childhood and really experience what it feels like to be truly free. Not free because you have things, not free because you're popular, not free because somebody said you were pretty, but free from the inside out. So I teach that there's only two games happening, outside in game or the inside out game. And those who experience uh, extraordinary lives are the people who are playing the inside out game. I like that. I would like to lead an extraordinary life. Um, yep. I think I, I, that's so, I've always been um, such a sucker for love. Love is mm. my, thing i mean i got this rose tattoo to yes. symbolize roses to me symbolize love and i kind of i mean i got this tattoo to symbolize that i'm the type of person who loves no matter how hard or how yep. many times i get beat down by it yep um, i just am just there's nothing more important than love i agree um, what, what else is there, you know? And so. Exactly. It, what's That's tricky of, about love is that there's so many different interpretations of it, right? So like, for example, what's happening in our world right now, even with COVID-19 and also the other pandemic of racism and disconnection and the illusion that we're separate, right? Some people believe and this is how it happens. Someone sits on this side and they say, those people aren't being loved. And then the people over here say, those people aren't being loved. Well, everybody, Hitler included, the people who enslaved my ancestors included, all of them were doing what they were doing based on a intention that had love behind it. Now, was it misguided? Absolutely. Was it detrimental? Yes. Was it brutal? Yes. And I don't know about you, Lily, but I've had some terrible breakups. I've been through some ridiculous stuff. And each and everything that I have, I've seen people die bloody deaths. I've held people while their brains were splattered out of their head. Like I've been down rabbit holes. And I'll tell you this, I regret none of it. All of it grew me, all of it made me a better person. And so uh, love is a tricky term. And yet there's something beyond just the wording, right? We have um, mirror neurons, uh, which is 
essentially an aspect inside of our brain, inside of our mind, where when we see someone else get hurt, we feel the pain too, right? There's this, like, you see someone break their leg over there and you went over here. Yeah. That is called mirror neurons. And to me, that's a reminder that we're all uh, buried in the same soil, right? Like that rose, the rose, ah, you guys, oh, I hate you. You're different from me. It says, wow, we're, we're all planted in the same soil and we have an opportunity to, to, to grow towards the sun, which is the evolution of what it means to be each and every one of us. Because it's, to me, it's like this, like involution. So internal, right? I'm playing the in, inside game. That involution turns into a evolution, which I, I evolve as a person, right? Like um, how I view the world changes. And then what happens is, is because we are hmm, vibrational beings, for lack of a better word, we then attract other people, like you and I, into our space, and that becomes a revolution. So involution, evolution, revolution. I don't know. I'm just talking. No, I love that. I'm like, yeah, give me more. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like will you do, like, FaceTime therapy with me? Like, this is what I need. <laughs> Um, that's amazing. I love that. I think, mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if you're not taking this strange time in this world to reflect inward, then you are wasting your time because absolutely now is the perfect time to do it. And it's hard and it's scary, this like taped up what's in there, mm -hmm. like see what's in there and you have to, you have to figure yourself out. And it's kind of like, now's the time to face your demons. Absolutely. You know? Especially in the time of, I feel like it's a time of revolution. Is that like how you feel about the world or the United States right now? What's, what's your view on it? Everything. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, but it's, it, this goes everywhere. Um, yeah. The sort of white is right systematic racism that's been sort of infused into our world is yeah. not a new thing. Right. And what's beautiful is that it's very difficult now for people to ignore that. Yeah. Some people want to. Right. Some, a lot of people, you know, would love to just turn their backs and, and, and go back into, you know, their normal lives. Yeah. However, um, and I'm not a religious person, but uh, Jesus said in the Bible, what, what you do to the least of my brothers, you also do to pointing to is like, if you don't care about the lowest in your society, it's it, everything's connected. Right. And so I think this is one of the most beautiful times in human history. I think that we are going to look back 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now and say, that was the who were talking about love, who were talking harmony and peace and actually like, like having this utopic society. This is when they actually got on the ground and did the work good in the moment, but produced something so beautiful, right? I think about my wife and, and she gave birth to our first son. We have twins. And, and a two-year-old, and she gave birth to our first son in our apartment in Venice Beach with no drugs, just her and I and one other person um, just helping facilitate. And th there was a moment when I even got scared for her, right? It felt like she couldn't go any further, and then she went to another level. And out of all of that pain came this beautiful little crying boy named Kingston Ra. And to look at him um, and just see the perfection, right? Just see uh, the face of God in this child reminded me that everybody is somebody's baby. And that is the micro of the macro of what we're doing here. And to me, Lily, you're, you're a part of this, right? Like, you don't have to do this. You don't have men on your page like me. <laughs> but
but and and I do want you to answer this if you wouldn't mind. Why? Care. I care because I care about mm. people and about our world that we live in, and I want to know that when I bring a kid into this world, it's a world that. I at least tried to help me have had so many amazing conversations and it's weird to have such deep and like people are mm -hmm. watching to have a conversation and it's also a great opportunity for other people to learn just as I'm learning. And, and I think that's why I wanted to do it. You know, I could reach out to people individually and be like, hey, will you just chat with me for a minute? But yeah. I fear I have the platform, so I want people to know what I'm learning. It's absolutely a learning process for me. And I am just trying to be a better person and more understanding person. And even in the last month, my whole view on everything, racism, all of it has just shifted because yeah. I've kind of, yeah, I was in the dark about it because yeah. it didn't, it, because it didn't affect me. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm a white woman. What did I have to worry about? And I have a lot to worry about because the people surrounding me, the human beings around me yes. are struggling and asking for help. So I'm going to help in whatever way I can. Huge. I think, I mean, the way you started this saying like love is, love is everything. It, it is. And I think I've learned that I've met so many amazing enough. Like I've mm -hmm. met so many beautiful people and it's weird because I'm a very socially anxious human being. So I don't mm. like, I don't like meeting people. I don't like social situations where I'm at a party. Like it makes me nervous, but this has been really like, out of my comfort zone talking to strangers and and being yeah. vulnerable and it's and it's done nothing but amazing things for me and uh and i think people have really responded to it really well and absolutely i want to know how you came to be doing the work that you're doing how did you end up at this point where you're preaching love and and uh you know you seem like you have like this inner light inside of you that's like beaming out and you just seem like a very happy I could be wrong but like you just you but you seem very at peace with yourself and I think at this time uh the movement aside and COVID aside it's kind of like that's all what, that's what we're searching for all of us yes I, I am I'm searching for peace inside myself right now more than ever in my life yeah. and I kind of, you know, how did you, how did you end up where you are? Yeah, um, I'll say this. I have been practicing the art of caring, mm -hmm. but not carrying. Yeah. And, and there's a big difference between caring and then carrying the load as well. And T.S. Eliot said, uh, it's not the load that breaks us down, but the way we carry it. So uh, for me, I've been fortunate enough to have some really messed up things happen in my lifetime. Uh, and in those things, and I called them messed up, but they're not messed up. It's all divine order, right? This, this was my soul curriculum, right? And, and even how I'm framing this is, an, is hopefully you'll understand that when I speak, how I view my life is from the seat of responsibility even if I didn't consciously choose it. So for example, some people will say, well, I didn't choose to have these parents. Well, in my view, you did. You chose before your soul incarnated to have these particular lessons so that you could have these particular breakthroughs, so that you could have the type of life that would have you go down this street to meet this person, to do that thing, to do. All of it is about the journey. 